Welcome to today's episode of the Working Wisdom Podcast Series, brought to you by the C.T. Bauer College of Business at the University of Houston. We're having a conversation about work-life balance, how to navigate and overcome challenges within your career, and how to make business more accommodating to a diverse workforce. So I'm really excited to have with me today Zach Wurzel, who manages the experiential learning for the college, among many other things. But in that role, he kind of stepped into it recently because when COVID struck and everything went crazy, we had to take our great big experiential classes and move them all online. But we still wanted to have a meaningful, personalized experience for our students. And so we thought, okay, in the past, we've been able to -to face-to-face set up networking with our students and our employers. How do we do this in a way so that the students feel connected and they feel networked and they feel engaged with the whole future of business in the classroom while at Bauer? And so I reached out to Zach and said, boy, Zach, do I have an exciting problem for you to take on. We're thinking about setting up mentors to work with our students and groups. Do you think you could take this idea and run with it? And fortunately, Zach was a great sport and he did take the idea and run with it and great things have happened. So Welcome, Zach. And can you tell us a little bit about how you got this mentoring program started? Sure. Thank you for having me, Jamie. It's uh, really great to talk about the mentoring program since it's been such a large part of my work and uh, everything that uh, kind of our office has been doing for the last uh, year and almost a year now. The mentoring program was something that started, uh, I believe it was July of last year is when you came to me with that request. Um, And we, uh, as a lot of us were seeing a lot of the world was changing um, and we needed to uh, figure out a way to help the students in uh, the your large experiential course have a networking connection. Um, and really to get the program off the ground, the first thing I knew needed to happen was to recruit the mentors. Um, and the we're in a really lucky place um, because Bauer has such a great alumni network and such a great name around town. So being able to uh, utilize that in recruitment um, was super, super, super beneficial. Um, We reached out to the Bauer Young Alumni Board, um, who was a great help in recruiting mentors for us. And then also we use our connections within the Rockwell Career Center and the connections with others within the college um, to basically do an open call for mentors um, on LinkedIn profiles um, and things like that to see who we can get um, that already had a connection to the college to come and help our students. Um, So that recruitment piece was uh, really the first thing to, to handle getting it off the ground and uh, I'm sure I'll talk about a lot of other pieces um, as we go along, but in the fall, we ended up having 117 mentors in our program, which is a giant undertaking, um, 117 mentors and about 930 students. Um, well, and so, let me just put this in context because I think you're minimizing the accomplishment. You went from zero to 117 in about a month and a half. Yeah, yeah, in about a <laughs> month and a half. And, and we trained them all. Um, yeah. We trained them all. And I'm sure, I, I'm sure I'd love the opportunity to talk about that at, at some point during this too. We had an online training for all of them. Um, but uh, I, I really do think uh, none of it would have been possible without um, just the great reputation that, that Bauer has. And when we reach out and are able to utilize our network and utilize the reputation that the college has, um, people are really happy to come and help our students. Absolutely, absolutely. So you talked about getting people trained. What are the kinds of things that you wanted to do when you were training mentors and preparing them? What were the lessons and the the mindsets that you wanted to establish for new mentors? When you're doing something at this scale, I really wanted to set a certain level of expectations for the mentors. What that means to me was I wanted them to know what we expected for them as a mentor and what we expected them to not handle as a mentor. So the important things that we wanted our mentors to do was try to help our students feel a connection to the university and to the academics and to the course that they're in, um, which is something that's very easy or 
hopefully very easy when in person um because you can sit down next to somebody and have that conversation and make friends that way um in the busy 3302 course that this is housed in there's professionals coming in all the time all the time to present students are given those networking opportunities but they weren't going to get that in a virtual world um so having the mentor hope to be able to serve as that person to build camaraderie within the groups, foster conversation with, within this, with the, the students in those groups. Those are the type of things that we really wanted the mentor to focus on. And when I went through the list of things that I wanted the mentors to be, the number one thing I ended with is, I want you to be a role model for these students. So think about it in the way that these students may not have interacted with business professionals before on a, a consistent basis. So what would you want them to see and what would you want them to emulate? Um, and when I was basing my training is mostly around that. Um, and, uh, and our statistics and facts from last semester really did back up that um, about 75% of the students in the course that um, completed a survey said that they did feel that connection to the college. So in that way, I think it was really successful. That is good. You know, we've talked about this, but that was always my big terror going into this virtual world that we have the first class they take when they come to Bauer. And so much of our goal is to make sure they make friends with other students. They feel connected with their future. They, they understand that what you're doing in school is purposeful. And, and that's always been so exciting. And then when you go virtual and they're basically sitting in their parents' house on a computer and it doesn't feel that different from high school or community college, making them connect to each other and to, to business and to the college, that's a lot harder. And I, I do know in the past with the class, we used to survey the students and we were really proud that always 80 something percent said they made a personal friend despite the fact that we have more than 400 students in each section they were still making personal friends, which the research has shown connects to long-term success in college. And then with this program, still more than 70% were saying, I made a personal friend as a result of being in the class. Can you talk a little bit to how the mentors work with the students to help them connect to each other? Sure. Um, so the mentors at the beginning of the semester all had a kickoff meeting with their team on Zoom. Um, so each mentor was assigned to a group of eight students. Um, and the first kickoff meeting, we wanted them to do icebreakers. Uh, we provided an icebreaker for each of the mentors to use with their team. We wanted them to answer questions, go around and get each person talking. Um, and we wanted to really make sure that all of the students were in those meetings and involved. Um, and we really talk to the mentors about you're there to facilitate those conversations, but you're also there to really take part in those conversations. Um, because the more that the students, but so I'll, I'll frame it this way, at the end of the semester, when I talked with mentors who had really good experiences and the students said that they really enjoyed talking to their mentor and working with a mentor, the ones that had kind of the best outcome were the ones that said in my first meeting i said to my team like i'm here to support you all um they were super engaged they're open to meeting with them throughout the semester to really help them through the work that they were doing so the ones that said that i made an effort in that first meeting to set the groundwork that I was there for them were the ones that were super successful. So as we moved into the spring, which were our second semester of the mentoring program, I really took that and brought it to the training session as well to talk about how to use that kickoff meeting as a way to set the tone for the semester, because it, it's it's so important. I think it goes back to kind of the whole thing is like you only made one first impression. So the mentors that made really good first impressions on their group at that kickoff meeting end up usually having really good semesters working with their groups. Um, so I, I really think that's a that's a way that we worked with the mentors to um, set up that sense of kind of pride in the work that they were doing with their students. 
We've talked a lot about the benefits to the students of having mentors. And I think people would kind of assume that there's a lot of benefits. I mean, the research shows too, a lot of benefits to having mentors. What are the ben benefits to the mentors for volunteering for a program like this? Because it's not like we're paying them. These folks are doing it out of the goodness of their own hearts. What kinds of things do you get out of this experience as a mentor? Yeah. I mean, besides the fact that they get to have like 50 emails a semester with me, um, <laughs> then um, other, than, other than they get to interact with me a whole lot, um, which is a great, which is a, a, a great thing. Um, I mean, I, I really think um, the mentors that have made a great impact in this program are ones um, that see the benefit of um, cultivating relationships with uh, with with students that uh, could potentially be employees for them down the road. Um, I think uh, helping them develop um, is not only an altruistic piece that, that, that they enjoy, but also they see the benefit of um, working with students like that. A large amount of the mentors are alumni, alumni themselves. So I think the ability to give back to the college in that fashion, I think is something that draws them back and is a, is a, is a plus for them, but also the ability to talk to students um, that may be going through some of the things that they went through, um, I think is, is something that's, that's beneficial to them. Uh, we also do try to provide a networking opportunity for the mentors as well. So um, at the end of each semester, I hold, Zoom meetings with all of the mentors or invite all the mentors to come and be able to uh, interact with each other so they can build a professional network that way as well. Um, so we, we hope it's a mutually beneficial experience um, for the students and the mentors. Um, obviously beyond helping students, we hope that um, the mentors are able to uh, gain a sense of um I, I mean I, I think I think it's something where especially professionals that may have been in the field a long time they've come back and said to me um I'm learning so much by working with students um I'm be able to learn new things about what's going on or new trends um or what TikTok is um <laughs> th th those sort of things um I I, I really do think um it depends on the mentor of what they're what they're kind of getting in there out of it that way, but um, I, I think th those are the type of things that the mentors have have gotten out of it. Um, and I think the connection, as I said, to our college is something that's really um, really beneficial, even for uh, mentors who haven't gotten to Bauer. Being able to work with Bauer students, um, a lot of mentors have told us how great our students have been um, and just the reputation of working with Bauer students, I think it is something that um, a lot of mentors have really appreciated. You know, you mentioned how some companies are using this as an extension of recruiting to, to create new pipelines and some of them are alumni that are kind of giving to the next generation of Bauer to make sure that the Bauer brand continues to be strong. It's been fun for me personally, how many of the mentors that you brought in are former students in the class. And they've been able to sit with their teams and say, oh, I remember when my team did this 10 years ago, which kind of makes me feel old, but it's also really fun to kind of see this generational giving back. And as you said, that generational connection of, gee, when I did it 10 years ago, it was like this. And, and especially since so many of the problems they're working on in their group projects are ethics problems to look at what are the ethics challenges that were important to my students and, and to my generation 10 years ago versus the ethical issues that they're really focused on now? I think that's been a lot of fun for people to look at as well. Yeah, and I, 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 really, I really do agree. Um, and it, it's interesting to see, um, and just the conversations I've had with mentors, um, it's really interesting to see their view on um, some of the ethics projects that the students decide to take on. Um, and uh, I, I think the biggest thing that the mentors are able to help these teams do is really focus in on what is an ethical dilemma and what isn't. Um, what, what is a 
specific problem versus looking at a gigantic problem. So one of the, I'd say more common ethical issues a lot of groups like to look at and talk about is offshoring of, uh, of labor. And if you try to make an ethical case that you have to present in 10 minutes on offshoring as a giant thing is going to be totally impossible, especially as uh, young business students. That's a giant, that's a very tough case for anyone to do in 10 minutes. But the, I think the mentors do help in the academic piece of, well, maybe you look at it this way, or maybe maybe pick one specific company to look at. So I really do think um, the mentors play a, a nice role in providing structures to some of the ideas that without the mentors in those groups, the students may have run down a rabbit hole in one direction and have to kind of bring those cells back, hopefully. Um, but uh, the mentors kind of provide some kind of, I, I, I'm starting to think of it as like uh, bowling with bumpers. So kind of keep, keep them in the right lane. Um, and I think that the mentors do help about that. Well, selfishly, I love that they're there for that because frankly, as you know, we have 1300 students in the course in the fall and another 900 in the spring. And there's no way that the other professor and I could give that level of personal attention and feedback to all 2000 plus students over the course of the year. But having that professional person that can provide context and structure, as you said, and, and just that professional maturity of, hey, let's look at this from some different areas because I've already made mistakes and learned from them and, and kind of let me share the benefits of my wisdom and experience. I think it's a good experience to have very early in their academic programs. No, and I, I agree. Um, and even from some of the, the conversation with mentors, um, the mentors saw places in their teams where they were like, I knew I needed to step in here. I needed to step in on presentation skills. I needed to step in on, um, well, this sounded sounds like too much of an opinion versus this is, can you find some research to back that up? Um, so the mentors really found a place where they can really um, step in and help their teams along the way. Um, as this semester goes on, they have that kickoff meeting I kind of talked about earlier, um, but they also have two different other check-in points with their mentors um, on the project itself. But what I think is even more important um, is they have check-ins on their career documents with their mentors as well. So the mentors will review each student's LinkedIn individually. Um, and then for the spring semester, we um, had the mentors review students' mock interviews as well. So I think um, that's where my hope is real mentoring to sort of come in is when it's individualized. As, as much as as much as they can help the team as a mentor and keep them in those pieces, I think when they can individualize the feedback they're giving to each student, it could really help that, them as an individual. And hopefully from that spring conversations with their mentor to take it kind of oh, further down the road of helping them through their lives. Great. So we are ending our first year of quarantine and hopefully going back into the real world in the fall, hopefully. And we're also finishing the first year of having this brand new mentoring program. Where do you see this going in the future with all these changes? Yeah, so I really hope um, that we can have some sort of in-person component. It's something that people have asked for. Um, students have asked for it in their feedback. The mentors have asked for it. Um, so when the world allows for it, um, I really do think that um, it's something where um, that would be a great learning tool for both um, the students and the mentors. Um, if the student groups were able to do a site visit to their mentor's workplace and see what it looks like um, and see what their work looks like in action, because it's one thing for a mentor to hop on a Zoom call and say that they work for KPMG or hop on a Zoom call and say that they work for BP. And in their student's mind, they can kind of envision what that looks like, but going there and actually seeing it would be 
a part that I would really hope to happen in the future. Um, I also um, I also hope that we're able to get the program more career focused. Um, so it, it's it is very difficult to do um, to do individualized focused at scale. Um, <laughs> But um, but when, when we when we think about it, um, since our recruitment efforts have been very successful, the recruitment uh, there's a lot of mentors that are returning. A lot of people have been part of the program for a while. The hope is the more mentors that we can get that are quality mentors, and we put them in groups of eight students. Eight students is a scale that's doable for people. So. Um, seeing how we can make more pieces of the program individualized um, is, is a part where that um, I really, really hope to see the program grow into um, as we as we definitely move towards the fall. Great. So last things, congratulations on receiving recognition from the National Association of well, Colleges and Employers for this program and its uniqueness and its excellence, which is wonderful. And if somebody wanted to volunteer to be a mentor, how would they do that? Cool. Thanks, Jamie. Yeah, that would be great. Anyone listening that would want to be a mentor, please just connect with me on LinkedIn and send me a message. Um, my name is Zach Wartzel, again, Z-A-C-H-W-O-R-T-Z-E-L. Um, and I would look forward to anyone who wanted to reach out uh, to potentially uh, mentor our students. We have a great program and hopefully we get some great professionals who listen to this podcast. Great, thank you so much for taking time to visit with me today and I will see you soon. Cool, thank you, Jane. Thank you for listening to today's episode of the Working Wisdom Podcast Series from the C.T. Bauer College of Business, brought to you by the Inclusive Leadership Initiative. The initiative aims to develop inclusive leaders and family-friendly cultures that support business strategy and superior business performance. For more information about Bauer and this podcast series, visit www.bauer.uh.edu slash podcast.